All right, I believe it is thinking. Yep. <clears throat> Setting it up. And we are live. Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Amy Klein, and I am your host this evening. And as you can see, we have a guest today. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, everybody, please welcome Greg Watson, the materials specialist for Golden Artist uh, Colors. Wow, my brain just went blank there for a second. Sorry, Golden <laughs> Artist Colors. <laughs> Um, and, you know, an amazing artist in and of your own right and um, just wealth of information. So I'm very excited to have you on. Welcome. Thank you. So glad to be here. Thanks, Emmy. Yes, yes. Appreciate so it. If you guys are interested in the amazing uh, demonstration that Greg is going to be giving us today uh, and all the supplies that he's going to be using, make sure to go to the website, jerrysartorama.com. And in the search bar, type today's class code, which is JL258. 258. So if you type that into the search bar, that'll bring up the teacher's cart and everything that he is using should be in there and pop up. Although I did hear you added a couple of things that we will have to add in later. So that's yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> but um, without further ado, Greg, please take it away. I'm so excited. Okay, great. Well, uh, welcome everybody. Um, so happy to uh, be joining you this, this evening. I am a materials application specialist at Golden, so I'm part of the team that is here to answer questions for you. If you call, if you send emails, you have questions about our materials or uh, materials in general, you know, we're here to support you. So um, you can see the number at the bottom of the screen here. It's help at goldenpaints.com. There's our local number, 607 847 6154. We have an 800 959 6543 number as well. All right. So, uh, technical supports uh, here whenever you need us. Uh, today, we're going to talk about neutral grays. I love the title that uh, Emmy came up with for the event. It's like find your super powers with neutral gray, which is cool because, it, you know, it may be that special for you. Um, and it is a um, very beneficial group of colors that can be added to your palette to help you modify color, to help you get a full range of values so you can make grisaille paintings, gr full gray paintings without color bias, and then use those colors in conjunction with um, your more saturated, highly chromatic colors to neutralize so that you can take those back a notch and, and not get, um, reduce the saturation, which is, you know, a helpful thing to know how to do. So these colors can help you do that. So um, first, what we want to do is talk about what neutral gray is. Let's kind of give it a little bit of a context and to do that, let's just look at a, a, a still here of the Munsell um, kind of color space. So Munsell uh, gave us this color space and it's essentially, you could think about it like a, uh, maybe a bunch of color wheels that are sort of stacked on top of one another and they're arranged in a, by value. So they're arranged to the darkest colors are at the base of the color tree, and then the lightest colors are at the top. So there's three primary components to color, according to Munsell. We have hue, which is kind of the color family itself. So, you know, your red, your red orange, your orange, yellow, yellow green. The, you know, he broke it up in a very specific way. Um, so you have the hue, you have the chroma which is the intensity or the saturation of the color. So the way that it's designed this color space is the most saturated color is furthest away from the central axis. Okay, the central axis is uh, basically pure neutral value. And so that's the third component. So you have hue, chroma and value. And value is the relative lightness and darkness of the, of the color. Okay, so that central axis goes from kind of a neutral zero, I guess, at black to an, an, a neutral 10. And that would be pure white. So pure black to pure white. And then you have uh, off of those, off of that stacked kind of axis, you have the color 
that uh, or the group of colors that are associated with that value sort of radiating out at that level. So your blues and your dark reds are down the bottom. They're kind of radiating out the most saturated color furthest away from the central axis. And as you get to the top of that color tree, you have your, you know, your yellows and your um, peaches and your uh, different stuff like that. And they are lighter value in general. And they, they sort of all function with the same way. Now, that's those colors that are kind of around that central axis, you can see that they're sort of desaturated. And so this is, this is sort of what those neutral gray colors can bring to the, the painting is you squeeze the good stuff right out of the tube, fully saturated. And then as you add that neutral color into it, you can begin to desaturate and, and make your way toward that neutral central axis there. All right. So in terms of product lines and kind of what Emmy has over in your, in your shopping cart there and stuff like this, you have with Golden, we have a full range. We have N2 through N8. We don't have the white and the black necessarily, but we have the, um, the neutrals that kind of fill that space, all right? So we have the, uh, all, all that, that full range in heavy body. I think in high flow and open, we have N5. So N5 sort of spans out into the high flow and open range. And so you can get a little bit of that middle neutral there in those lines as well. And then for Williamsburg in our oil line, we have uh, a range of two, four, six, and eight. And you notice when you're looking at these, these are 37 ml tubes. These are the smaller tubes, the ones that hang on the, on the, on the normal rack. And we're excited uh, to share with you a new set that we have that contains these four colors. So we have a, a, a new set. This is it here. It is in this very cute, beautiful little box and it has all four of the neutral grays in it. So let's just do a little close up in there and I'll, and I'll um, sort of, Hold on, let me get that in there. All right, I'll sort of turn this box here and you could sort of see what you're looking at. So we have like the little windows. You can check out the hand-painted color swatches on the tube itself up in there. Some directions for how to use. And it's just good fun. So if we come over top, let's unbox this, uh, this thing and show you what's inside, all right? So you take this flap up and really I just wanted to show you more than anything that there's a QR code in here. So you can hover over that QR code with your cell and you can open the camera and hover over that and then it will bring up a link. Push the link, it'll take you to a video about how uh, you can use the neutral grays. And it'll be basically recapping some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about um, today and this evening, but it's uh, there for you whenever you need it. So you have all your lovely range of neutrals here, okay? And you get that whole group of colors. And so there you have it. With Williamsburg, you could do that. If you wanted to add some um, ivory black in there and some titanium white, I've got a big old tube of titanium white that I'm bringing to the party today, then you have a kind of a full range of stuff that you can paint with. And that's perfect for your, your full value grisaille painting, right? If you wanted to do from black to white with a full range, you, you could use these colors here. And this, what so, makes it- yeah, Sorry, go. I have a quick question. Would you say ivory black is like closest to a neutral black? It's a toughie, okay? <laughs> and you know, you're, you, 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 you've, touched on something that is um, a little bit of a challenging thing. We don't have a fully neutral black, but ivory black of all of our blacks is a little bit of a warmer black. Okay, so it's it's got a little bit of that neutral quality to it. Lamp black, for example, is, is, is very cool. And so that one would be really cool. Mars black might, might kind of work. Mars black's about there. And, you know, raw umber would be, well, I'm way off the screen here. Raw umbra would be, you know, down here in terms of the warmth. So we'd have something like that. If this, if this were cool up top and, and this were kind of warm down the bottom, there would be your range. Um, 
You know what color works pretty good, Emmy? It's a little on the warm side too, is the Italian uh, black Roman earth, which Ooh. we love. At, do, do your customers, maybe, maybe you, the folks out there have heard of the Italian black Roman earth, but that's a great color. That is a great color. It's, there's Williamsburg has so many wonderful colors that I always forget about. And then I like, when I rediscover them, I'm like, oh, love this. It's, yeah. it's like Christmas every time I see them. I know. I, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm coming into uh, the North pole every time I come to work, you know, it's great. That and in a few months, it will actually feel like the North Pole here, ladies and gentlemen. So anyhow, one thing to think about with these colors, which is which is kind of fun, is when you have something like this N8 here, this can very much function like a, uh, a colorful white in some ways. So when I'm painting, I'm in the landscape, Maybe I'm doing a work. Sometimes I'll challenge myself and say, you know, instead of white, I'm going to use tight and buff as my brightest color. You know, I'm just going to use tight and buff. And then if I really need to highlight something, then I'll bring the titanium white into the mix and I'll start using that as my highlight um, bright. Or I might use my, my brilliant yellow extra pale. Well, the N8 can function in a similar way. So you can just kind of have that on the palette. If you want to, if you want to tint things, you want to brighten things up, you can use that neutral eight in place of white. And then when you really need to crank things up, you can bring the titanium in there because it's going to brighten, but it's not, not going to sort of, um, but it'll leave things a little bit neutralized. Okay. So then you can come at with the titanium white, it'll really saturate uh, the color. And, and likewise, the N2 can function in a very similar way. I mean, any of them could work in, in at different value range in the painting. But often when people come and visit, we'll show them all kinds of dark colors here, like the Payne's Gray Violet, the Turkey Umber, um, the um, Corbet Green, whatever, the Raw Umber, and, and the Blacks. And in this case, the Neutral Gray, neutral gray 2 is very much in that dark space that you can utilize that as a, as a Black in some ways. All right. So so think about that when you when you open this package up and you're you're making your painting. And probably the 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 easiest thing to think about with these colors is how can you how can you use them to make a piece? And so the the grisaille. What is a grisaille painting? It's like a French word that just stands for like grayness or something. That's at least how it describes it on, you know, Wikipedia, or whatever, but it's a gray painting and it's an achromatic gray. Okay. So it doesn't have a color bias. It's not tending toward a warm gray or a cool gray. It's just kind of right there in the middle. So if you want to use these colors to make a full range, you can do that with, with this group of colors and get this thing laid out. And then you add your white and your black and you're good to go. What does this do for you as a painter? Well, it, it kind of helps you to organize the composition without struggling with color, right? So a lot of people might, maybe Emmy showed it on, on, her, on her page where you do like some wipeout technique or you use a single color and you use the white of the ground plus that color to get a underpainting. Or um, in this case, you can just push, you can push the grays back and forth to get the composition laid out and the value structure organized properly before you start moving in with color. I mean, the color, let's face it, the color is the expensive stuff. The color is the frustrating stuff. If you're, if you're trying to fight color back and forth, unless you have a, a good sense for how they work, sometimes it can be a challenge. And then the, uh, and then the, um, the timing is there, right? So if you want to be kind of quick about getting something laid out, you could do it in gray and it's a nice economical, fast paced way to work. And then after that, you can come in with your, with your color right on top of there. And you could start to lay in some color to get the piece uh, it fully articulated and so that it, um, it is, has saturated color on it. So one way to sort of, work this out, start to think about this is, you know, you can get uh, like a value finder, like something like this. 
this is a homemade one. Emmy, maybe you got one that you could put up on your uh, your uh, list. I don't know if you have value finders over at Jerry's, but you might, do you? I'd have to double check. Uh, we have a lot of things. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, it's one of those things where it's hard to kind of keep track of all the products that we have. <laughs> we might, uh, but off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure. I'm sorry I did that to you. That's okay. Uh, but, but you guys have the acrylics in the wide array and you get our viewers can make their own absolutely oh i love that idea yeah that might be how we made this actually <laughs> so um <laughs> so this is cool because you can hold this up to your your objects you know not necessarily your painting but your still life or whatever and you could start to match some of the value to the objects in the in the in the piece Right. And you could start to get a sense for reds are going along with N4. Uh, the bright yellow here might be even sort of an N8, something like this. The white, you know, is so close to white that it would probably be up in a, 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 a nine or a high nine or something like that. So value finders like this can be very helpful for determining what colors fall into what value range. But better than that, if you if you go to our website and and um, our our tech support person in the chat will put up a listing of the Munsell notation for Golden and for Williamsburg, and you can look on these sheets. You can download them from the websites, or you can click the links that are going to be there, and you look for the value, and the value that these are that are presented here are the same as the number that you'll see on your tube. So the neutral gray eight, uh, if you roll down through here, you might find that your CAD yellow deep is very close to a neutral gray eight. Okay, so if you wanted to- useful information. Yeah, right? That's great. So, so there's, there's, your, um, there's your connection. Each one of our colors has a, a value rating on it that is available on these sheets. So for example, if I took out a, let me do something real quick here. I'll get a sheet and I'll show you what happens when you, I gotta move slow so I don't lose my camera there. So if I take, for example, pyro red in Williamsburg and I wanted to neutralize the pyro red, I would take something like an N4 because it's pretty similar to an N4 in terms of its value. And so to do a little bit of a desaturation there, I could take my pyro and my N4 and I could work those together. Hold on, we're just gonna. Yeah, I so say your camera's getting a little, uh... there we it go. Got a, Perfect. got a little wacky there. Yep. So is there something I could do to clarify that? So let's, we can mix that from there. Maybe I need to move all this stuff off the camera and just be right in here with the same stuff. Um, so I could take this and kind of neutralize it. Let's grab some of that. How cool. But, so would you neutralize it with a color that's on that same kind of level? If you wanted to, to maintain the value mm -hmm. and you didn't want to change the value too much, you could do that. You could just neutralize it with the color or with the value that, or the neutral that has the same value as it has. Mm -hmm. So if the pyrrole is a, N is a, is a roughly a value four, then yeah, you just would grab that N4 and you'd make your mixture there. Nice. If you wanted to lighten it and neutralize it at the same time, you, you could do that too. And we'll put this, maybe we'll put this on that still life to sort of show how it can be used in the, wait, why did I do that? Let me grab all that up. We'll just make three steps here and then we'll put some more of that neutral out. But yeah, that's the, that's the difference there is the neutral grays can either lighten, darken, or help you maintain the value of the color that you're trying to modify. And it's all about sort of like taking the, taking the saturation down a notch. Mm -hmm. 
definitely some lovely colors that come from just that that red and that gray. I always I always love watching people mix paint. It's so satisfying. Yeah, it's so much fun to mix and paint. And this is the kind of stuff that when you're in the studio, you could always take complementary colors like Emmy, you were talking about uh, teal and you know, like a transparent red iron oxide, like a greenish blue, and then a, 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 an orangey red. And adding those to one another can neutralize it, make a nice neutral. Um, and there's no doubt about it, but you're, you're gonna be likely ending up with something that has a bias to it in the end. And it's hard to find colors that, that give you that perfect, that, that perfect, perfect neutral. neutral. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that's the, because I, I, we were talking about this. I love to use uh, like a phthalo viridian and like the transparent red oxide um, in my, my artwork. And they do kind of tend to cancel each other out, but they, sometimes you get a really fun warm tone or you can get a really cool, cool tone depending on how much of each you mix in. But uh, it definitely, is hard to get that nice neutral. So using a neutral gray is something that just never occurred to me. And it's it's like a light bulb just went off and I love it. Yeah, I mean that that's and it's and it's an addition to. So you mm -hmm. have you have all those options there where you can utilize that that complementary mixing, but then you also have the idea where you can you can come in and um Use the neutrals if uh, if you desire. Use the neutral grays. So I'm going to come in here and see what happens when we kind of start to dial this into this apple. This might be totally crazy and 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 might not work, but let's see what happens here. Because I could be getting I could be getting ahead of myself here. Like I need some white. I need some all different types of stuff here. And then if I can come in and just kind of transition this apple away from the light a little bit with some of these neutrals that I just mixed in. Let's see what happens. And I just put a little oil in there. You mixed a little oil in your, your paint. I had to, I had to mix a little oil and we, I, you know, I, I, I might've used solvent in, um, in another situation, but, um, but in this case, our little studio here doesn't have very good ventilation. So we try to stay away from um, the solvents in here. Yes, be safe. Be safe first, right? Absolutely. So this, in this case, I need to have a little bit of, an apple has a little, you know, kind of shiny skin there. So I have to put that yellow in there because that's kind of where we're at with the, with the lemon. So the lemon, if we, if we kind of looked at it as a, uh, value in and of itself would would be up in that up in that uh, six to eight range, and so like the permanent lemon kind of goes in that goes in that space. You know, the permanent lemon is a really beautiful, bright, lemony color. And if I wanted to neutralize that ever so slightly, I'm just going to grab some of that and from my red and I'm just going to work it into that uh, that lemon and just kind of knock it back a little bit and then I can put it in that and that apple there so anyhow that you can you can access the, quite a green looking lemon there isn't it the yellow does right. pull very cool it's total it looks totally it looks totally bright and uh, and alive you know with yeah. the with the the uh, special sauce there. So anyhow, this kind of thing allows you to uh, connect the colors in your palette to the, the grisaille painting that you've made there. So if you uh, find the colors that have the same value, you can begin to work them into your painting and, um, and begin to develop a relationship with what value do each color have. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we as we go on here. But grisaille is a is a, a good way to start. You can start a grisaille painting with something like a, an image transfer. 
you know, and then you that guy. Hey, it's exactly, it, you guys all recognize him. And then you could take your, you know, your, your set of neutral grays from golden and apply that onto the image transfer surface, begin to sort of develop a, uh, a, a grisaille painting, let that dry. And if you wanted to come over top with oils, a little, uh, a little bit of oils over top, totally fine. Add a little uh, linseed oil into your color and you're good to go working on top of those acrylics, okay? So uh, Scott maybe can put a little link in for an image transfer videos that we have on our website so that you all know how to uh, get an image transfer down so that you can have a, uh, a base to work off of. And then you can take that and, um, you know, try and uh, try and do a, um, a grisaille on top of that. So, you know, when we when we're working in a landscape, for example, and this is one of the, one of the gesso boards that uh, Emmy has in your in your shopping cart. It's a ampersand gesso board, um, and what I want to show you is, you know, just this idea of utilizing the neutral grays to set up a um, a gradient. And in this case, we have, you know, a cerulean blue that's sort of brought up to a lighter color with the neutral eight. So cerulean blue, and let's do this in, in acrylic. So cerulean blue is like roughly a, a value four color. And we want to increase that value to an eight. So when you're in the landscape, you're looking at the highest part of the sky. And the, you know, that part of the sky tends to be really kind of dark and saturated, right? So that's this beautiful saturated color right here. And then as I come in with more, uh, with some gray, we want to get to something like that at the, at the base. So I'm just going to kind of work these together and see if I can have a little fun with it. I mean, I sure did use a lot there. It's an impasto painting. <laughs> What's that? It's impasto. It's You're... impasto. So let's just kind of like get it on there and see what happens. Yeah. So that is, so, I'm sorry, which neutral gray is this? This is a neutral eight. Neutral eight. This is the brightest of the neutral colors. We don't have a neutral nine. We just never really made a neutral nine. But we have a um, article that says how you can make a neutral nine if you wanted to make that. And it's just a, a matter of adding a certain amount of white to the uh, to the color. And uh, So you can do something like that. And then as you get to the um, background of the landscape, you do the same thing with the green colors and begin to recede those into space you know you're sort of like you're you're finding the connection between the sky and the earth and that happens when you kind of take your the same type of color and work those together at that horizon there and then you you reserve your sort of your big beautiful color for the foreground so that that really kind of draws it forward to the viewer you know so this is a great way to kind of get in there and use the neutrals to start a landscape. But there's a, quite a difference between the neutral color and then the, the color as it's tinted with, um, with white. So it's nice to start here and kind of begin to build into the uh, landscape with the neutrals, but then you can reserve the white for more a little bit more saturated color so let's look at this uh this is that same cerulean blue chromium and tinted or added together with the uh n4 and you could see that the the step in the middle between the two and those if we take and we put that onto a desaturated camera um sort of have the same value right so we've totally neutralized that color but we haven't lost the value structure of that thing there. Oh, wow. So that's kind of what we're looking at. 
if you take that and you tinted it like we just did on the horizon, then you have you know your cerulean blue mixed together with your N8, and you and you can build this kind of step toward a lighter, more neutral color there. And so you know, desaturated that tends to have a little bit of a uh, a clear value step. Okay, and then. But when we take this color here and we take that cerulean, instead of making a value step in the middle there, we add titanium white to it. And so you have a very distinctly different type of color when you add titanium white to that versus the, um, the, the neutral eight or whatever. Where's that neutral eight? This guy, right? There's the neutral, the neutral eight that's added there is added to the cerulean and you get this desaturated color. So it is a, a very helpful uh, thing to uh, bring to the table when you're, when you're trying to get this, this um, variety of color. A lot of us will just add white to tint things out. Adding the neutral gray can kind of do this sort of thing here. Mm -hmm. It's definitely so, cool to play with, um, no matter what you're painting as well, because, I mean, you were talking about with well, landscape, even with portraits, I enjoy desaturating my colors and then having just pops of high saturation here and there, uh, just to kind of get the eye to move around the face. And it's it's such a really, really fun thing to be playing with and just be very hyper aware of. And I think when you really start to look at those things in your artwork, it, it just you gain leaps and bounds in your skills. It's it's wonderful to see. So I like the idea of that. I mean, the the saturation of a color it really can draw your eye in, right? So if you're doing a portrait and you wanted to kind of bring the viewer's eye to the the the, the front of the face. It's nice to be able to desaturate the stuff that's around the perimeter there, maybe tie it to the environment. And then as you're, as you're bringing us through the, the, the part of the face that, the, that is closest to our eye, you can bring the saturation up in that section there and really sort of make that thing pop and start to come to form. Mm -hmm. um, you but really you know- Where people look, it's so much fun. This, like if this, I wanted to really make them look at your ear, if I popped in a lot of saturation right at that one spot and the rest of it was very desaturated, yeah, they would immediately go straight there, which is so much fun. Yeah, like if I put that green right there, Emmy, See? right, then you would be like, what, is that an ear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it draws right you straight that. to it and it's it's so satisfying to see and, and just play within your artwork, which um, speaking of, Somebody was saying that they really, really wish that they could get their eyes to do the desaturated camera. Oh, um, totally. Everything just went gray. Now, oh. I would say, if they're trying to do that in their own studio, pull out your camera phone or whatever yeah. camera device you have, take a picture, edit it in your just like, it usually comes with like a, a photo software and it, you can edit it just slightly. Bump that saturation all the way down to zero and you have yourself a neutral camera. <laughs> yeah. I even like, you know, on the iPhone, they have a, a setting in, in the photos thing called Noir. Oh, and yeah. I like, I like the Noir setting. I think it's actually, it might even be a little more accurate than our desaturation camera here in the studio. Cause all those desaturation cameras have a different kind of effect to them. And mm -hmm. so you gotta, you gotta take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. They can all be slightly different, but, um, but um, it is a good way to go. When we did 2D design in, in college, it was pull out the phone, try to get a sense for what a saturated color. Hold on, we're trying to get trying to get it clear here. I think those those punchy colors are confusing the camera. It did. <laughs> but I mean, that's the that's just it. I mean, like when you're looking at a bright yellow it is um, very challenging for the eye to sort of make an assessment on what the value is. So you use, utilize the, um, the cheat sheet that we have for uh, Golden and Williamsburg, and you get a, 
you can you can begin to build a relationship with those things. Let's neutralize this uh, teal gray that you um, that you um, were that we were talking about earlier. So this is a um, light phthalo green. Love that color. There, come in, come in. There it is, light phthalo green. Sorry, terrible, terrible, uh, uh, foggy stuff going on here with the camera. So. I'm going to just mix that with a an N8, and let's do let's see what we get. There we go. That together. That is such a lovely color. Oh, I'm loving that. Yeah. See, I again, I go back to portraiture because that's what I really, really love to do. It's my favorite thing to paint. And okay. that right there just reminds me of like a five o'clock shadow, like those really fun, like light, like almost like scruffy face kind of looks yeah. or like right underneath the eye. That's a, a fun color to pop in in those areas. Okay. <laughs> Here, speaking of five o'clock shadow, let's just put that on him right there. Oh no, way too bright. <laughs> but okay. You were talking about mint chocolate chip ice cream. I feel like this has a little bit of a mint chocolate chip ice cream vibe, maybe even yes. more than, than that, you know, like it reminds me more about it. But if I wanted to kind of take that down a notch too, I could use an N2 and just a touch of N2 mm -hmm. and we could darken that up. Oh yeah, you can darken the value. Yeah, so that's, I mean, and this is it. I mean, it's it's not like high concept here. We're basically, we're taking colors we're using an achromatic color to modify it and take take the edge off of those things. And so you put these things around your palette like you would any of your other colors and they can just kind of live there and be the support system for the rest of the stuff on the palette. That's really what we're talking about here. You know, it's essentially, it's like saying, hey, white and black, now you got a whole group of friends that you can work with when you're when you're thinking about modifying your color, you know. And what it does is, in this case, it's not really taking that out of the hue family. It still's got a greenish vibe, you know. It still feels like minty something or other, but it's darker and it's more it's more kind of laid back as a color. Mm -hmm. So you know that's that's kind of what we're dealing with here. And these these things are are you know, yes, you can use them for, you know, gaining access to your superpower if that's what you need. You know, if you needed something that's going to help you desaturate, come into uh, a new relationship with your color, um, then these could, these could help that out, you know? So any, any questions out there in the uh, cyber world, Emmy, or, or what? Uh, I believe we had one specific um, that came up earlier, and I know they answered it in the chat, but I just wanted to make sure we address it, you know, while we're talking here. Um, when you say neutral, you are referring to the color's temperature? Yes. Yes. Gotcha. It, ten it tends to be neither cool uh, nor warm. So, you know, then yep. it's, it's like in between, uh, red, yellow, and blue kind of a thing. So if we go back to that Munsell, um, the main Munsell, uh, color tree, uh, the neutral is just in between. So if you look at the color tree, the lower left-hand corner has got your reds and magentas and up to the up to the upper right is your greens and greenish blues. Those are your complementary colors opposing one another, and that space that's in between them is neutral. But it's neutral in the other direction as well. You have your yellows and oranges, and your um, you know kind of purpley uh, blues and stuff like that down in the lower right. Those are opposing one another. They're complementary colors. The space in between is a um, is a neutral zone, okay? So it's neither warm nor cool, or and it and it does not have a hue or chroma associated with it. Mm -hmm. It's sort of achromatic, no no kind of color association with it. And these are based off of um, Munsell cards that were uh, purchased. You can get like Pantone owns the Munsell 
um, um, brand. And so you can buy Pantone cards that have perfectly neutral color associated with them. And we read those into our spectrophotometer and then we based our color off of those readings. Okay, so that's the so that so it is a it is a very neutral looking color. Although in some cases, depending on what you're what you're looking at, like for example, if we go back to this landscape thing that we were messing with on the overhead or on the on the main overhead uh, camera there, it does look warm. So like this, this color right here does have a kind of a warm look to it, but it's all relative. There it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it kind of almost looks like a tannish color in this space when it's so close to this blue. But yeah. really, it, it, that is what neutral, what a neutral color space looks like when it's in proximity to a really, really cool color. And so that's the stuff that trips our eyes up. We are looking at something ultra, ultra cool. And we have something that's even perfectly neutral right next to it, and it still looks warm. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's kind of the interesting concept and something that you can play with in your work. So there you go. Do you need to have tight and buff? No, you just get yourself some neutral, uh, neutral eight there, and you're good to go, because it can play like a tan if you put it in the right context. You know. True. Now I had somebody ask, um, how would the neutral grays work with, um, sorry, I'm trying to find it here in my, my chat. Uh, the trans, like when it comes to say transparent or opaque colors, like how does that, the difference between those? Um, they specifically called out the Williamsburg earth colors. I, I love it. Thank you for that question. That's a really good question. Let's do a, um, let's do a couple different things to think about when you're, when you're doing the mixing with the with the neutrals and you're talking about opacity transparency these are all opaque colors all right so let me put a new card down here and see if we can keep the camera in check these are all opaque so let's say i have a uh n6 and i want to mix it together with a uh turquoise greenish turco cobalt turquoise greenish these are both super opaque colors I don't think I'm your camera sorry, knows sorry. what it's focusing on. I think if you I, put I, your hands more in there, it might be a little bit more stable. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's helped. Sorry. No, that's sorry, great. So, is, so, sorry. so you know, these two mixed together will function better uh, than if you mixed a, uh, you know, like a quinacridone magenta or a quinacridone red in there. It's going to work better in that it's, not going to it's going to reduce the transparency of that color for sure okay all right so this so is like gonna the cobalt is an extremely opaque where the quinacridone red is more transparent yeah exactly so transparent colors will become more opaque mm -hmm. and in this case we're really kind of like light lightening that up a little bit mm -hmm. so there's no way around that if you use, if you make a grisaille and you say, oh, the value structure is perfect on this grisaille and I love everything the way it is. And then you come over top with like a quinacridone red um, and it's transparent because it's transparent and you're adding a transparent color over the grisaille, it'll start to darken that passage, right? So it starts to become a little tricky and you almost like, like an acrylic user has to get used to the way that the color shifts with drying. Mm -hmm. The same thing can happen here. If you have a grisaille and it's worked out and the value structure is perfect, as you start to add translucent color over in glazes or whatever, you can start to darken that passage, right? So it does take some getting used to, to, to figure that out and, and, and dial that in. If you're, if you're mixing a trans, if you have like a quinacridone red and it says that's a value four, and then you mix it together with a value four, there's a phenomenon that I'm trying to figure out here where when you mix them together, if both are a value four, the stuff in between seems a little darker. So the mixture in between seems like darker than either color themselves. Let me show you this. Fanchon red. All right. Fanchon red. This is a 
roughly a value for color, the value for neutral. And then as you mix them together for some weird reason, if we desaturated this camera, let's desaturate it real quick. I'm excited about this. It's, it's oh, wow. seems darker. Yeah. All right. So it's, it could have something to do with the, um, the saturation. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to have to uh, have you folks get in touch with me and I'm going to figure it out and I'll take, take these questions on one by one. Hmm. Why is this happening? I'm not sure. There's someone out there knows, but um, this is it, something we just realized. It might be something similar to like when you mix a red and a blue together and you get a purple, purple seems really, really dark just because of how much light it absorbs. It's, it's got to be it's absorbing something like more of those wavelengths. Right. Right. It, it, it seems like it must be something like that. And the Fanchon maybe is a little translucent, something about when you start to add the opaque material in. I don't know, but that it definitely has a darker uh, look in when we desaturate it or even when you take a picture of it, it kind of looks darker. So these are just sort of some quirky things that take some getting used to and, and um, becoming familiar with. But you, if you wanted to, you add a little bit of N6 uh, in there. And you crank it up a touch, you know, and you just kind of get it, uh, get it to look right. But um, swatching is also very important. Swatching. 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 Yes. Yeah. What, it, you know, what are you saying? Like you do some testing, you swatch it out. Yeah. It yeah. Out. Like I, I usually do like the mass tone, uh, a drawdown to kind of get the undertones and then a tint. And uh, fun fact, I literally just had a swatch show where I was swatching oils, acrylics, watercolors, and some dry media. So, so you can kind of get familiar with what your colors do, just like you're doing here, mm -hmm. uh, where you're, you're swatching out how the, they mix together. And it's just, it's so important for people when they are in their own studio to do this as opposed to only working on specific pieces. I think this is where you learn really what your art supplies can do. Yeah, agreed, hundred percent. We're we're always uh, recommending that to folks. You know, test it out, test your application. But if you know, we all have different brands of material. We all have different stuff. You bring in a new color to the to the collection, try it out with your different colors and see how it works and and get to know it. And then you can keep these around, and you can flip back to them when you're when you're uh, on a rainy day when you can't figure out what to do and maybe you get some uh some juice and some inspiration from looking at your swatches so no i love that that's a great idea and those are some pretty pretty colors yeah so those are a couple things to think about when it comes to opacity and transparency these are all, all opaque colors because they're made with titanium white um the williamsburg's made with uh lamp black which is like a carbon black. The uh, the golden is made with uh, ivory black. We call it bone black over there, the bone black. Mm -hmm. And then some earth colors to kind of modify and give a, a just temperature. So those opaque colors will have a strong influence on any transparent colors that you mix them with. Very nice. Yeah, good deal. All right, but that's about it, y'all. I mean, that is the that's the concept and Everyone in the comments, I gotta say, has been so excited about all this information they just got. Like it's it's been very valuable, for sure. You know, I I'm glad to hear it. I, you know, I I I hate to uh, feel like I'm I'm just kind of like a broken record saying the same information over and over again. But it is um it it these are helpful colors uh, for those kind of simple reasons that that they can be very very much like a workhorse in the in the in the palette you know like your white like your rum or your your blacks you know and these colors can can join the ranks so uh, i'm glad to share them with you today yeah well, thank you so much for being on here let me actually pop myself back over onto the uh there I am. Hi. <laughs> screen. Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's always so, so appreciated when you guys uh, come on here and give us all this information. It's, it's just fantastic knowledge to have, and especially to see it in person and like you hands on kind of moving the paint around. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, our pleasure. Absolutely. Anytime. Happy well, everyone, 
thank you so much for being here and watching. Uh, send Greg some love. I always hit that thumbs up button. And of course, uh, if you want to share this with your friends, you absolutely can. It's available for rewatching. And even though this was uh, Facebook Live, because we do have a guest on, we will be uploading this within 24 hours to rewatch on YouTube. So you can catch it over there as well. Uh, one last time, though, if you want to show that um, banner for how people can get in touch with you, let me actually make you larger one more time just so they can read it. Yep, there's the old info. Uh, help at goldenpaints.com or 607-847-6154. So make sure you uh, get in touch with us and let us know how everything's going in your studio. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much for being on the show. And everyone, make sure you join me next week, of course, because we are going to be playing with some pastels doing portraiture, which I'm so excited. Yay. Very stoked. How much fun. So, yeah. Uh, I will see you next time that we have you live. And everybody, thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.